Hi, I'm Phil Hundle. Uh, as I introduced this series of uh, the condemnation steps, uh, breaking it down step by step and, and helping you, the landowner, better understand each step, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about step one, and I've kind of broken down step one into step 1A and step 1B, 1B uh, because I think there, there, can be, there can be many different uh, parts of each of these steps. And so by no means is this uh, condemnation timeline or my condemnation timeline end all be all. Other lawyers that practice uh, eminent domain and representing landowners may have uh, other timelines and other steps and that's okay, but this is going to be a general uh, timeline we're going to work off of. So step one is, you know, you the landowner are approached, uh, you're contacted by a right away. This is the initial uh, contact that you have. Uh, out of the blue, uh, and uh, number one, you don't know exactly you know, who this person is, what they're doing, who they represent, and so let's talk briefly about that. You know, that initial contact can often, oftentimes be a phone call, which, you know, that in and of itself is these days, how do people <laughs> find and locate your phone numbers, but it may be a phone call. Uh, it's probably going to be a letter, a real basic brief letter uh, to you uh, from the right-of-way agent. So a right-of-way acquisition agent. Uh, are, there's these companies out there, right-of-way acquisition companies. There's lots of them throughout the state of Texas and other states, and some are national, nationwide companies, and others are not, and some are more, much more local. Uh, but they'll have a, a right-of-way acquisition agent. Uh, it's like any project. It gets kind of delegated to, you know, the, the multiple steps in the process get delegated to different people, and this portion of uh, the initial phase of the condemnation case, potential condemnation case is delegated to a right-of-way acquisition company, right-of-way agent, we call them row agents, right-of-way agents. So that row agent is going to be contacting you uh, to you know, get your contact information so that they make sure they're sending out the right information to the right person. Do you still own this land? Uh, is there anybody else that owns it that you know of that, that they'll be obviously asking you some of those questions? Uh, along with that cover letter, uh, there's going to be a normally a landowner bill of rights, and that's something that the condemnor wants to send to you so that right away uh, they say, you know, these are your rights as a landowner. And oftentimes I, I feel like they flip it around and basically say, us as condemnors have these rights uh, to take to take your land, to take what we're planning to take from you. Uh, and, and, that, and that comes from just the, the, the feeling and sentiment that many landowners feel when the, when the right-of-way acquisition agent talks about the landowner bill of rights. So uh, I always ask <clears throat> and you, what, what should you as a landowner do at this stage and at this phase is find out uh, and get as much information as you can from the right-of-way agent. Uh, because you need it, and you need to know, um, you know, number one, who they are, exactly who they are, who the condemnor is, and a lot of times that's not always that clear because these condemnors will have multiple different entities. It's one thing if it's the state of Texas and it's TxDOT. Okay, that that's pretty clear, uh, pretty understandable, but if it's, um, you know, a, a pipeline company that has multiple entities, and it may be Kinder Morgan, but they're uh, planning to take this through Kinder Morgan Tejas, okay, well, those are similar names, and that's not too hard to to uh, put two and two together on. Okay, it's Kinder Morgan, but sometimes it's not as clear. Uh, these different pipeline companies, especially the smaller pipeline company. So find out what kind of project it is. If it's a pipeline company, uh, we're asking. You know, I would like you to ask the right of way agent to provide information about that pipeline project. Uh, things like things that would come from the railroad commission. So. A T4 permit number. Uh, have they? Do they? Has their project been approved? If it's a power line project, a high voltage transmission line project, uh, you know, has Intergy or Centerpoint. Uh, you know, is there a cause number uh, from the PUC, pub, uh, the Public Utility Commission of Texas? Uh, is has their? You know, have they been? Has their certificate of convenience and necessity, the CCN? Have they gotten a CCN? Uh, has it been approved? Uh, and then if it's TxDOT or a county with a road expansion, you know, we're asking more about that project. And, uh, you know, TxDOT, it's, it's going to be on their website. 
most likely, and they will have had public meetings, probably, um, uh, and there'll be minutes from those meetings. Uh, if it's county, same way, uh, commissioners, court meetings, uh, water lines, sewer lines, very similar. County, if a county's doing it, if a MUD's doing it, there should be some minutes of those meetings. But more than anything, you're asking about more details about the project. Uh, we'll talk more about, we're going we're gonna to go into this step one and break it down actually into two. And so step B, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that you should and can be asking. Also, uh, a note, when you're in this first initial stage, I call it step one, uh, what should you begin, beginning to think about is hiring an attorney uh, that focuses on these types of cases. Uh, so it's not, not just any particular attorney, because as we know, there's attorneys that handle family law cases, criminal cases, or other type of civil litigation. Uh, and there's not, you know, not all attorneys handle these type of eminent domain or condemnation cases. So uh, begin uh, thinking about or think, begin looking for an attorney that handles these types of cases uh, so that they can help, na you know, help you navigate the process or, or help navigate the process for you. Uh, from from as early as possible uh, and we'll talk about some of the benefits going into step 1b about you know temporary limited temporary access agreements and, and really trying to get ahead of the initial uh, plans and uh, of this project okay so with that uh, we'll move on to the next step